What is going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? Today, the video uh, that's being filmed is October 22nd, 2013. And I just finished watching the Apple event. So lots of stuff that Apple covered today. Unfortunately, I can't memorize all of it. So as usual, when I do these recap videos, I must look at my iPhone right here because I took my notes down and everything and organized them in a certain way so that way I can explain everything to you guys. So let's get started. Now first, as Apple usually does it, they brag on themselves, but I'm going to skip that part and jump to the first thing they talk about, which was OS X Mavericks. So that's the next update of their Mac operating system, OS X, and it's OS X Mavericks. And all they did was like recap like what they announced like a few months ago uh, when they announced you know, OS X Mavericks as well as demonstrating it. Basically, it like improves the hardware of your Mac the power efficiency, compressed memory, integrated graphics, and then they integrated maps and iBooks in there. But they gave more information on it today, and the pricing concerned about the OS X Mavericks operating system is actually free, and it's available today. So for those of you guys that own a Mac, go ahead and, and download it right now, or install it if you have one. All right? So once Apple finished talking about OS X Mavericks, then they started jumping onto the Macs and they started out, out with the MacBook Pro Retina display. So let's start with that first. Uh, they talked about the 13 inch model, they made uh, some upgrades to it. Uh, the 13 inch model will have f the fourth generation dual core Intel Haswell chip and this thing will only weigh 3.46 pounds. It has nine hours of battery life and it has 90% faster graphics and this is available for $1,299 and it ships today. As well as the 15 inch models concerned, it has the GeForce GT 750M GPU, it has 8 hours of battery life, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and this model will be available for $1,999 and it'll be available today. Now, you guys uh, have forgotten already, a few months ago, Apple gave you a sneak peek of their next generation Mac Pro, which is pretty much like a little cylinder compared to the giant tower that we have right now. But, but they gave us more information on the Mac Pro. So, they say that this thing will be launching either the quad-core, 6-core, or 12-core Intel Xenon processors. It'll feature an AMD Fire Pro graphics up to 4,094 stream processors. And this is up to 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it, V-R-A-M. It has a one terabyte PCI base flash storage, and this supports up to three 4K displays. Uh, and this features a HDMI out, Thunderbolt 2, the USB 3.0, Bluetooth 4802.11ac, and this has a motion sensor when you go to the back of the computer. This has dual audio out and this will be priced at $2,999 for the 3.7 GHz quad-core Intel Xenon processor with 12 GB of RAM, dual AMD Fire Pro D300 graphics, and 250 GB of storage. And this thing looks insane. And from what uh, Phil Schiller was saying at the event today, this thing is very quiet. Now they also talked a little bit about their apps in terms of the productivity apps that they created themselves as well as their uh, uh, media creation apps that they created themselves and they started out with iWork and it's basically that they made improvements uh, like drastic UI uh, and changes so they all they did was talk about like the improvements that they made and they announced that the pricing for these updates in case in this case for the iWork apps, pages, numbers, and keynotes, this will be available for free and you can get it today. But this is only if you have the, a new iOS device. For me, I'm already you know, using an existing iOS device right here and I just went to the app store to check if I'm eligible. Fortunately, I gotta pay five bucks for each of them. Same thing with the, uh, the iLife applications. Uh, but then again, that's expected. Um, iPhoto, iMovie, GarageBand, those are all improved and it's free for any Mac and iOS device and you can get those today. Now, in my opinion, this is where we got onto the most exciting part about the event. And this is where they talked about the, the new redesigned iPads. Uh, and we got two of them, but I'm going to talk about the first one with you guys. So, before I move on, the first iPad that they announced is the iPad Air. So the iPad Air is the fifth generation iPad 
uh, because the previous one we had was the fourth generation iPad. That one, it just had a like, few minor upgrades, upgrade to the lightning connector as well as like a better processor or something. I forgot what the minor upgrades were because it wasn't a drastic change. So, you know, what you are going to see right now is a, a slide full of pictures of the iPad Air uh, as well as me discussing the specs with you. So let's take a look. The iPad Air is 7.5 millimeters thin, which is actually 20% thinner than the previous generation, the fourth generation iPad. This weighs only one pound. This has a A7 64-bit chip. It has an M7 co-processor, 72 times faster than the original iPad. And this has a 5 megapixel rear-facing camera, a 1080p front-facing camera with better low-light performance. This has dual microphones, and this is going to be available in white and silver, black and space gray. And this features a 10 hour battery life and for the Wi-Fi only model the lowest you can get for a 16 gigabyte model is $499 and if you up it up to a cellular model it's $629 and this will be available on November 1st. So as you can tell from the slideshow that you just seen the iPad Air looks very similar to the current iPad mini that we have right now which is the first generation with some uh, uh, minor adjustments I believe. I think like the volume rockers uh, on the original iPad mini was on the left but then like they changed it from the right or if, if I'm just being stupid right now. <laughs> I don't know. But as you can tell and Apple actually showed us this. The bezel for the iPad Air is actually smaller compared to the fourth generation iPad. Uh, if you like put the two together uh, and Apple actually showed a picture uh, at the event today where like they compared the two bezels and the iPad Air has a much smaller bezel uh, and and they're actually going to keep the iPad 2 in their lineup and the iPad 2 will just be uh, around $399. I'm surprised that they're still going to keep the iPad 2 because eventually that thing is going to be outdated from updates and they'll probably stop selling that but they want to keep the iPad 2 so that way people can get a full-size tablet for just $400 at a, a very good price. So the fifth generation iPad is done I'm talking about. Now we're going to talk about the next generation iPad mini. And all they did was put a retina display in it. That's it. Everybody has been uh, wanting a retina display on the iPad mini since it was first launched. In fact, uh, people were saying that when they went from a retina uh, from a non-retina display to a retina display, going back to a non-retina display, they were like, the iPad mini is un unreadable. But some people didn't feel that because even though they realized the screen difference, they liked the portability of the iPad mini a lot more than the full-size iPad. So, again, take a look at the pictures of the iPad mini with retina display as well as here in the specs. The iPad mini with retina display has an A7 chip in there and the resolution uh, of the screen is 2048 by 1536 which is actually the same resolution found in the iPad Air. This features a 5 megapixel rear facing camera with a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera and it's got faster Wi-Fi and LTE is expanded so it can be used around the world and this will be available in black and space gray as well as white and silver and this will be available later in November at $399 for the lowest model. So as you can see the iPad mini with retina display doesn't look that much different compared to the original iPad mini uh, uh, but other than that this is a solid device and you're finally getting a retina display on there for those of you guys that love the small size iPad uh, for its portability and that way you don't have to deal with the full size iPad. Now, as far as the original iPad mini is concerned, Apple is still planning to keep that in their price lineup for just $299 for the lower end model. And that is a wrap of today's Apple's event recap. Uh, I mean, we got OS X Mavericks, we got the iWork improvements, iLife improvements, we got the MacBook Pro Retina display improvements, as well as the two iPad uh, updates. So that is all I have to say today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. What do you guys think about Apple's event? Wait till my next What Do I Think video, so that way you can hear my thoughts, and then you can discuss uh, your thoughts as well. Or you can do it right now in the comments, doesn't matter. But wait for my thoughts if you guys want to. 
on Sunday on my next What Do I Think video. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.